Welcome, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Welcome to Ascend Masterclass. This is the second class, and this is the class where I step back. I'm usually the guy in the front talking, and in a lot of the places we go, there's somebody right by my side. And right now, as I look at the screen, she's right by my side. She was our roommate for some time. She, I first met her in Brazil, and she was watching Ziza, I think. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. She that was, was the first, very first time I met you guys in person. She volunteered to help by watching Ziza and then with merchandise, right? Yeah, that's right. And which city was this? Was this uh, Sao, Santos? Santos? That's Santos? Santos back in 2016. That was the first time I served as a Christ of Party member. <laughs> and and I, uh, to be honest, I, I met you that day. I probably met a thousand people that day. But you stuck out to every single band member. And they all came up to me and talked to me about this encounter that they had with this Brazilian that had incredible English. And that was not a common oh. thing. <laughs> and then you volunteered to help each time we came back. And then eventually you translated an entire tour with us and started helping with tour managing. And then we found out you were coming back to California and said, where are you staying? You said, well, I'm still working that out. You ended up moving, <laughs> with, moving in with us. <laughs> yeah, now, incredible. For how many years have you been working with us, Michelle? It's been, I think, about three years now. Three like years. Full time. Full time. Full -time two years full time. Amen. Three or four, four years, actually. If we go back to 2016, yes. yeah, four years. How many, how many concerts do you think you've translated as the primary translator? I am not really good with numbers, and you know that, Mark. Uh, over 100, I know. Over 100. Uh, well so, over 100. Sure. Well, we, we were in Brazil like three times in 2018. Three Alone. times. Alone, yeah. So Alone, it's probably, yeah. probably 200 times. And... Uh, I am one of those people who, as you know, can speak fast. Oh, yeah. Tell me. <laughs> who, can, who can speak with an, a lot of analogies and stories. Yeah. And who speaks from his heart and pretty much never sticks to a script. <laughs> pretty much, guys. So, so basically, you're the best in the world. I'm just going to hand everything over. The official torch has been handed over to the fist bump to Michelle Oliveira. She is on our team. She's full-time. She is right now stuck in the Rio area in Brazil. What, what's the city specifically? Not bad. I'm in Cabo Frio right now. Cabo I Frio. Cabo, so not a bad she, place to be stuck at. Yeah, but she's supposed to be here. She was going to come a few days later to, to yeah. the than, than the rest of us. And then all of a sudden the quarantine happened and many flights later, you're still there. You're doing this from there. God bless you. Go with God. Introduce the rest of the people. Let's get this ball rolling, guys. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much, Mark. I want to thank all the Christ Safari family because we are family, you know, we are. in every single aspect, actually. So I'm going to slow down a little bit <laughs> because... I myself know how hard it is to interpret and translate a person that speaks really fast. So I'm gonna give um, I'm gonna give a little time for my interpreters. So also I see here on the comments, uh, Renato Costa is saying, Michelle, we have translation in Portuguese. Isn't that amazing? So I want to thank Mark and the whole Christ of Party team for being such an encouragement to me since the beginning. Mark, you've been amazing, especially um, always uh, encouraging me to go a little further and to encourage me to go full time. I remember all your words from the beginning to, you know, you would, you would, he would say, hey, Michelle, how come you make a dollar percentage you make? I know you still preach the gospel, and that's true, um, everywhere I go to this day. <laughs> but when you can just, you have such an amazing skill and gifts from the, from the Lord, and you can use all full time into the Lord, and you see how God is going to provide for you. And that's, I can't start this presentation, this class, 
because this class is more than it's going to more look like a testimony because what I really want to do today is to encourage you, encourage you to use your gifts and talents into the Lord, either if it's translation, interpretation, if it is music, whatever it is, you can all use all your gifts and talents into the Lord. So I want to also give a good uh, a hand of applause to all the interpreters. Every time I think about uh, them, I think about myself. <laughs> so I slow down my voice again. <laughs> and I know, guys, this is really important as we go all around the world and we make disciples from every nation to have people with servants' hearts. So my heart goes to all of you who are interpreting right now and who will interpret um, in the next days, we have 40 classes to go. So with no more delay, um, I want to share with you um, a screen. So I'm going to go. So this is, guys, this is our first day of class. How exciting. So this is our very first day of class. And this is our second class. So you still got 38 classes to go. So that means that you can go ahead and share on Facebook, share on Instagram, and share on your WhatsApp all the classes. And they're all for free, guys. They're all free. So you got to tell them, hey, guys, this is the classes. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell everybody about it. So we have some really cool classes. I myself, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna I'm gonna join if I can, and I'm hoping I can to join every single class. Why? Because I've always wanted to learn how to dance like Nikita. Come on, guys. I try, but you know, we ne we never have the time to do it because we're always on the go. So now it's a great opportunity for you and for me to learn from the best. So um, how do I do this? Okay, so we're all learning how to, um, how to do class online. I don't know about you, but I'm a theology student and my school is totally online right now. So I've been working with Zoom uh, much more than I wish or even thought about it. So, but we're still learning, we're still learning. So I want to share with you a little presentation. So let's see how it goes. Okay, guys, so are you guys able to see uh, my screen? So this is, for me, this is an epic um, photo, an epic picture of what it means to um, interpret and translate. And I'm gonna give you the, the difference between those because um, I could, I didn't know actually until I was talking to one of my friends and, um, and she's a professional. Um, I don't actually consider myself a professional, but I am, let's say, I have to be. But you know, I didn't go to school for this. I actually learned by doing it. And this is one of the things that I really want to encourage you guys to. So um, let's see. So today uh, I'm going to be talking about sermon interpretation. Um, a little introduction about myself. Uh, Mark already talked about um, a little bit about me. So my name for, for those ones that doesn't know, my name is um, Michelle Oliveira. And I am a child of God. And what does that mean? <laughs> that means that I've been saved, I've been redeemed, and my testimony is also a, a good part of who I am right now. So I really want to encourage you that everything that you've been through in your life, it's going to be used for God's glory. Anything every single thing in your life, you know, even the bad stuff, 
because you know when you are in Christ you are a new creature and God wants to use you for his glory but once you um once you find inside of you who you are in Christ who God made you to be things get much easier and one of the things that really really um changed my life was when I understood that I'm a daughter of God. So guys, this is a, a huge change in my life. So I'm going to give you uh, an opportunity to become a child of God in a couple of minutes. And this is really important for all of us because this is why we do what we do. So um, next uh, slide. So um, I have an associate degree in international trade. This is just part of introduction. Like I told you, I'm, in, I'm a theology student. I'm also a drug addiction counselor. Yes, I've worked as a volunteer for about 10 years in my church with a mutual gr a group of people. And yes, I've been saved and redeemed from drugs. The Lord delivered me from alcoholism, from smoking cigarettes. You know, if you, if you want to be delivered from those things. And also, I was delivered uh, from marijuana. So if you really want to be delivered, if you want the Lord to save your life and change your life forever, I'm going to give you an opportunity today. Because if you see me like I am today, the way that I am, it's just because of God's grace and for everything that he has done for my life. And I'm so blessed, but it's not because of me. Some people think, oh yeah, you are a really good person. Yeah, I've even heard this from people, you know, but all the glory and all the honor I give to my Lord that had forgave me, that has set me free from all addictions and everything that wasn't good for me. That's the reality. So I'm just telling you all of this because my background is really important to where we're going to get, because I want to encourage you where you are, because God doesn't want you to stay where you are, but he wants you to go further. Amen. So this is, I, I really enjoy this picture because this is when Pastor Marx encouraged me uh, the most is when I'm, I'm interpreting, translating him, and he gives me the floor to share. And this was in, in San Luis Maranon in 2018, I think. And we got to share the gospel with thousands of people, about 80,000 people in the audience. And, and I know the Lord had um, given me this mission to share about God's love and everything that he has done in my life. So it is really important that if, you, if you're not sure about your salvation, if you don't know where you're going to go after you, you die, because we, we're all going to die one day. And we don't like to think about that. So I want to give you this opportunity right now. I want you to be sure that you're going to heaven. Just because of the grace, just because of Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross. So I want to give you that opportunity. If you want to be delivered from any kind of addiction, any kind of pattern that you don't want to go back to, if you want to be sure of your salvation, you know, there's one more thing that I didn't tell you guys that I am. I'm an evangelist. So that means that my heart, what's behind my heart is to share the good news of the gospel. So most importantly, much more than teaching you uh, or telling you, sharing you uh, what is translation and interpretation is for you to be saved is for you to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I really want to encourage you to pray with me right now. This is really important. 
And if you tell me, Michelle, I don't know how to pray, just like the other day, uh, I've been blessed to minister to a Japanese lady. And she said, I've never prayed to God. I've never talked to God before. And I, I, led, her to, I led her to God. She haven't, she haven't said the sinner's prayer, which is, you know, accepting Jesus. But she, for the first time, she spoke to God. And that was so meaningful, especially if you know how Japanese culture is. So there are many aspects. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just so happy that, you, that the Lord has touched your heart to give your life to Christ. So it's very important that you pray after me and you can say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. And I want to give my life to you today. I ask you to come into my life and make me a new person. Write my name in the book of life. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to walk with you for the rest of my life. Give me the insurance of eternity. In Jesus' name. Amen. So this is what you do. And the Lord will set you free. He just sets you free from every bondage of the past, from every bondage of addiction, of everything. This is exactly how it happened to me. So if you want to talk more about it, you can go ahead and type here on the comments. You can send us messages by email or through Facebook, Instagram. I'll be glad to share more with you. If you don't know what you did, if you don't understand still, I'll be very glad to explain to you. So let's continue. This is really important. I want to thank all the interpreters with me right now. Uh, so <laughs> thank you. Obrigada. Gracias. Merci. Um, to all of our interpreters, we have a team about, I think we have about 16 to 20 people right now. They're going to be interpreting or translating all these amazing classes to you. So I want to shout to all of them. So this is some other faces. So I just want to say that I'm very thankful for all of you, especially you, they're, they're people that are translating for me right now. We have Portuguese and Spanish going on right now. So I want to thank you again, again, again. So guys, how did all of this started? So maybe you're wondering, Michelle, people ask me, has asked me this all the time. They say, Michelle, how did you start? How, how all of this started in your life? And Mark ac actually um, just mentioned a little bit um, back in, in 2016, I served um, as a nanny for the first time. Um, they were pretty impressed with my English, but I have to tell you, I have a lot to go. So this is not an English class. If you speak really good English, if you fluent in English, you will catch some mistakes I make. So there's so many things I have to improve, but like I told you, I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience, how all this started and how did I improve to become a better interpreter. So uh, back in 2017, I, I went back to Brazil. Should I say this? I'm in Brazil right now. But anyways, um, and then I started translating, interpreting for Christafari for the first time. So I have a couple of other pictures here. And when they first, um, when they first invited me, uh, the first thing I said, well, it's a huge task. Uh, I am not a professional, but here I am, God send me. And this actually started back um, 2006, 2006 when I first got my first English Bible. So I felt like the Lord wanted me to learn God's word in English. Hey, I have to tell you guys, I got saved when I was 22. So I didn't uh, grow up um, in church. So I didn't know God's word, even in Portuguese. 
So that was kind of scary. But I understood that God had a plan for me. I had no idea that in about three years and a half, I was going to go to 15 countries. Yes, I've been to 15 countries so far. So it's like a miracle. You know, I've never thought that God was going to bring me back to the U.S. to use the platform of gospel reggae um, as an interpreter to go to 15 countries. And you might be asking, but Michelle, is there, is there, are there 15 countries that speaks Portuguese in the world? Well, no, I don't think so. I think there, there are eight, but I can't even name them now, but I know there are um, three that I, on the top of my head, I know Mozambique, I know Brazil and Portugal. What else? I can't remember right now, but no, those other countries that I've been with Christ of um, I've been there with different roles. Because, you know, when the Lord calls you, he's going to use you with whatever you have, the gifts and talents that you have. So this presentation here, it's not only about how to interpret a sermon, but also to encourage you to use your gifts and talents to the Lord, whatever they are. So imagine if I was just an interpreter and, and Christ the Fari was going to Kenya, why would they take me? Well, guess what? I could be a nanny. That was the first time I went to Kenya. But I'm an evangelist. So wherever I go, I'm going to share the good news, you know. But eventually, they needed a tour manager. And uh, I had been in a couple of mission trips with them. And I've learned a lot. <laughs> so in some of the other countries, I've been there um, as a tour manager. So anyways, going back to interpretation. Um, so this is a little bit about uh, my testimony and how I ended up um, being with Christ Safari for this last three years and a half, almost. So I want to share with you um, a couple more um, pictures here. So what do you need to become an interpreter? We're just a, just a person that works into the Lord. So there, there, I, I numbered a couple of things here. And by the way, I forgot to say this in the beginning, is that um, we're going to have Q&A so you can ask questions um, before the end. And also, um, there's a chat here. You can type whatever you need right here, okay? So anyways, uh, going back to um, what do you need to become a interpreter or a translator? And also, I'm going to define those things in a little bit. E eu vou te mostrar algumas coisas. It's hard. Necessitas so, um coração de servo, não? I don't Tiene know que... if you notice, um, with Christ Safari, we do a lot of stuff. So... Let's see, Connor. Now, you've been seeing Connor a lot here. Um, yes. <laughs> and he does a lot of different stuff here. You're going to hear his voice. Say something, Connor. Hello. Hello. So he is in charge right now of a lot of stuff. I can't even number it. But if you see his role on the band, you're going to see him as a sound engineer. But he does much more than that. Like, let's say, Nikita. Nikita, you just see her as um, a dancer. But in reality, she's in charge of, um, uh, how do you say, the, she recruits, no, I forgot the word. Okay, help me, Connor. Um, she's also in charge of fundraising. That's the word I was looking for. You see, it happens to everybody. Um, she's in charge of fundraising, so and many other stuff. You know, um, let me let so it's me. It's like see. HR. Yeah, she's like That's HR. 
you know, human resources. Oh yeah, she does that really well, yeah. you know, and she did that with Connor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was the one in charge of recruiting him, you know, saying yes or no to him, but he was fortunate um, and she said yes to him. So, and we are fortunate to have him very yeah. much. It's yeah, he helped, he helped us a lot. So also another um, thing that you need, it's to have a relationship with God's word. Come on, if you want to be a good interpreter, translator of sermons, you really need to know God's word. And how do you do that? By reading every day. I can give you some tips right here, right now. Because that's the way I do it. So um, it's better that I share with you my own experience because it works. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing what I do. But I know it's for God's glory. And I know that he gives me what it takes for me to do this. So you need to have a relationship with God's word. So that means I read God's word every single morning. So I start with Psalms. Proverbs, I'm reading the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you, you know what? You don't have to read like 10 chapters at a time. You know what? You're not going to understand it anyway. So why do you do that? You know? So if you have to, read one chapter. If you can understand better, if you're a good reader, maybe you can read two, three, or 10. But if you're starting, if you're, if you're like, and one more thing, uh, interpreters, if you think that um, I'm speaking too fast, you can send me um, a text message, okay? And say, Michelle, slow down a little bit, okay? Because I want everybody in other languages to be able to understand because communication changes lives forever. The message of the gospel changes everything. If we're not able to communicate, we're communicative people. We like to communicate. We like to hug also, especially Brazilians. <laughs> but we, we love that. We, we love to use our brains. That's, that's the truth, you know, because God made us that way. So next topic, um, obedience. You need to obey God and your leadership. There's no place for rebellion here. I know that some people would say, well, Michelle, um, my leaders, they told me to do something that was not in the Bible. Well, you got to have discernment. You know, um, I truly believe that God has placed you in a church uh, under a leadership for you not to obey like blindly, but for you to grow. And iron sharps iron, and that's really important. And you know, when I'm telling you these things, um, I just got a message from one of our interpreters, Anik. She's awesome in Spanish speaking, and she speaks Dutch too, and English, obviously. And she said, it's going well. Awesome. Thank you. Because um, I know it's hard to be translating and, and typing. It's crazy. You sometimes miss some stuff, you know. Anyways, going back, um, you need to be bold. You need boldness, holy boldness, and courage. You know, the Bible tells us that greater is the one within us. And who is that? The Holy Spirit of God. He's inside of me. He's inside of you. And if, you, if somebody has given you a task, even if it's inside the church, outside the church, you're going to do it. God is with you. If you're doing this for God's glory, he's going to make, he's going to help you make what you have to do. Of course, you got You need to put some effort into that. Definitely. I'm not saying you don't have to go to school. You don't have to study. You just have to pray and ask God to give you. No, we all put a lot of work into this that we're doing right now. And we put a lot of work into studying, studying God's word, studying whatever. I study English. Um, I'm a theology student. Not that I want to know more than other people, 
but I want to know more for myself so I can share with other people the knowledge of God. God's word tells us that we perish, his people perish, we, his people, because of lack of knowledge. So we need knowledge, we need guidance. So next, I just said it, <clears throat> excuse me, um, study. You need to study. And then you need to repeat it, everything over and over again until you get it. Give me a second. You know, this is not an English class. <laughs> I really wish I could give English lessons and classes. People ask me all the time. I just don't have the time. I'll make some time, sometime. I just don't know when. But all the knowledge that I have, I really want to share with you today. And every day you can just text me or ask me or send me a message or whatever. You know, if you have any doubts or anything, I'll, I'll make time for you. Amen? So, interpreter and translator. Is there a difference? Yes, there is a difference. And what's that difference? Um, uh, hopefully you guys can see my presentation because it's not the same thing that I see here, but it's okay. Um, anyway, so there is a difference, and I learned this not long ago. So, uh, interpreter can also be called an actor. And I want to show you a video of what does what what that does that mean? Okay, there you go. You won't get into heaven unless you have been born again. Okay, I don't know if you were able to see what I saw. Um, okay, I just saw some messages here on the chat saying I am speaking too fast. Let's do it. Um, here, Renato said, oh, he wrote it down all the countries that are speaking Portuguese. Moçambique, Angola, Cabo Verde, São Tomé, Portugal, Príncipe Timor-Leste, Guiné-Bissau. Thank you for doing that research. Um, the video was too slow. Maybe put in a small size. Oh, I don't think we have the time to do that. But thank you, Juan, which we, we can try to do that um, next time. So I'll keep sharing with you my slides then. And then we will try again. Share. Yeah. Wait, Michelle, real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in your screen share options, choose partial screen so that you can make the presentation a little bit bigger. Partial screen. So if you go Where? to like advanced. More. Um, remote. I don't see that. Advanced. I'm already sharing. Should I go back? Yeah, so stop it real quick. Okay. Screen. And then there, there's, yeah, screen share, and you'll go up to advanced. It, I don't, advanced sharing. I only see only host and all panelists. And then press OK or something. Only host. There's not, there's no other options. Okay, never mind. There just, are no just other do it regular options. Then. Okay. So. Okay, sorry, guys. Thank you for your patience. So, okay, let's keep going. Um, so, an interpreter is also called an actor. You probably heard this before, and that's why I think, in my opinion, I don't know about your opinion, but in my opinion, it sounds kind of weird to say an interpreter, because it sounds more like an actor or an actress, right? So, um, but it, that's what it is. 
if you if you have seen a person um, translating a sermon, you see that that person is imitating that other person. And if that person doesn't do that, it sounds really weird. So the interpreter takes a role and imitates somebody, a character. So that's exactly what what a interpreter of languages is doing, is imitating uh, the the panelist, the person that is speaking to the congregation, and showing them all the emotions and everything, even the tone of their voice. So we often see in church um, consecutive translation. And right now, what we're having, and if you're listening in your own language, Spanish or Portuguese, you are getting a simultaneous translation, which is really hard. I can tell myself because I just came from one, <laughs> uh, our first class. I was a Portuguese um, interpreter. So I know it's a lot of work. And I really applaud all of you again for doing it. Thank you so much. So, um, so let's um, recap. So an interpreter is an actor that imitates, that takes form, gets the shape. So you got to have this, the same face expression. You got to walk with um, the speaker. If the speaker goes to the right, you have to go. If it goes to the left, it has to go. You have to go. If shakes hand, if, if raises their hand, you have to raise your hand and so on and so forth. Tone of the voice is really important. Voice pace. If the speaker speaks like this, you better do the same. Pretty sure my interpreters loved it when I did this because it's really, really slow. <laughs> if the if uh, the speaker sits down, like in this picture, you should sit down. And I remember oh, one of our last um, sermons, Pastor Mark was preaching about going and sending people to uh, to their call, and I remember him asking people to gather shoes up in the air. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do that. Okay, let me do it. You know, it was kind of weird, but I had to do it together because, you know, um, we have to relate to people that are not understanding what the speaker is saying. You know, if you don't do exactly, if you don't imitate exactly or the best you can do, of course. It it makes no sense to to the audience. You know, it's it's. You think about your audience. Think about other languages that you don't speak. You know, I got that very uh, deep sense inside my heart. I guess when I went to France, and I couldn't understand a word. When I went to Hong Kong. And I couldn't speak Mandarin, even though they have a lot of English signs and a lot of people can speak English. But I was like, okay, if I get lost here, I'm lost. <laughs> Obviously, we have our phones and we can make it work, right? <laughs> but um, let's relate to each other, right? People with different languages. So um, interpreting takes five stages. So you got to listen. Take notes if you can. Take notes. So you need to listen. So once you listen, then you got to understand. And then you translate mentally. So all this, this process um, happens really, really fast. And then after you translate mentally, you articulate your speech. So what does that mean? That means that you speak, right? In a different language that you're listening. And sometimes um, we make some a little, little mistakes here and there, just repeating the same word in, in 
in the language that we hear. So I've done that. But so that's the that's the the fifth step. Monitor what it has been said. So that's when we monitor. We're like, okay, I just translated uh, the same word to the same word. Okay, let me go back and correct that. So that process is really quick. So, and so I'm gonna talk about consecutive interpretation. So consecutive interpretation has the same steps and, but there's one more that needs to get into that. Um, it's memorization. So first you listen, you understand, you translate mentally, you memorize, it could be a phrase, it could be two or three words, it could be a paragraph that's even harder, um, and you memorize. And sometimes, you know what, especially for you, um, translating right now, sometimes you just get, you just have to summarize, you know, get the whole idea of what the person is saying and just summarize. You don't have to say every single word, but it needs to make sense. It's really important. It needs to make sense. So sometimes, you know, I know it's hard. I've been there. And you're translating for me right now, interpreting, remember? Um, because translation, um, I think I jumped. Um, translation, it's literally um, text. So when you translate, it means that it's text, it's a book, it's translating any kind of text, not only book. You can translate an email, you can translate anything, but it's written. It's not, um, it's not the, the word spoken. So that's why we say interpretation because it's the word spoken. So for you girls interpreting right now, um, uh, you're doing a great job for sure. So then you articulate sp speech, you talk, and then you monitor. Sometimes we have to go back and correct ourselves, you know, I've done this, I've been there. <laughs> so I have another video. I know um, the video are not the best, but I'm gonna try again, because I love this video. Transform my life. Jesus, stay in my soul. Jesus, Lord, now. Lord, we say this. You satisfy my soul. No one here before me. So this is a good example of consecutive translation. Um, let me go back to my presentation. This is a good example of consecutive translation. And um, let's see here. Another um, aspect of any kind of interpretation. I just, you know what? I'm so used to say uh, translation because it's, more common to say that I, I get myself um, trying really hard to say interpretation. I don't know about you, but I just did it. I said consecutive translation. So if I say it, you know what I mean, right? So it's fine. So um, anyway, so cultural context. This is like everything in a interpretation, you know? This is why I say that whatever you did, whatever you do in your life, it's going to end up in cultural context, contest. So um, that means that whenever you're translating, interpreting somebody, you can't, um, you can't just say um, translate an expression 
into the same thing because it's not going to work. Especially in English, uh, there are many expressions that has no actual meaning if in Portuguese, for example. I can only talk about Portuguese because that's my mother language. I speak a little bit of Spanish. I have long ways to go. <laughs> we were just in Argentina. That's where I met this awesome people. They're going to be one of one of these um, one of our translators today, interpreter. See, I did it again. Um, Anik, she she lives in Argentina, and that's when I met her. And we're going to have many other ones uh, joining us uh, in the next classes. So um, I don't have cultural context for Argentina, for example, for, for Hispanic language, for Spanish. And there's so many different um, dialects in Spanish also. So um, that's why your background, things that you've done, they count a lot. So um, it is really a challenge to um, translate into an equivalent in your in in another language so this is really important so i always try to listen to other um interpreters so i have i'm i'm a really big fan in in brazil of uh, pastor felipe parente and when i'm um hearing him um interpreting uh sermons sometimes he comes up with different expressions to translate um, English and back and forth. Busca los dichos, expresiones equivalentes y lo hace muy bien. Entonces, si yo llego a este, you know, ahí yo no sé lo que yo hablaría en aquella situación y ahí yo aprendo con él cuando él uh, traduce. Ah, entonces, você tem que tener ese contexto cultural del lugar que você está traduzindo para não traduzir errado. Uh, no Brasil a gente usa quilômetros e nos Estados Unidos a gente usa milhas. Não é muito fácil de converter. Uh, não é similar, é diferente. É, 20 milhas são 40 quilômetros, mais ou menos. Você tem que fazer, uh, se você falar é, se ele falar inglês, 20 milhas, e as pessoas não vão ter mais ou menos a noção. Talking about. And another point is that sometimes you have to add things to what they're saying. Um, so, just to bring, bring them to the context. For an example, um, today I was um, interpreting Mark. And a couple of times I had to say things that were not, that he was not saying, just to bring people to the context uh, of what he was saying, especially because I know a lot of the CDs and I know a lot of the songs and I know what he's talking about. So I presume in my head that people are not going to understand because they don't know about that subject so well. So, you know, give, give a chance to what you're thinking. You know, sometimes you're going to be thinking, oh, should I add this? But, but the speaker didn't say that. It's okay. It's fine. You can add just to bring them to a context uh, of what the speaker is saying. Another, um, another um, topic as names. You know, sometimes names, they can change or they can be the same. For an example, Mary. So Mary in Portuguese is Maria and I think in Spanish is Maria too. Maria. But let's say a person's name Sean. We don't have a translation for that name. We don't even have that name in Portuguese. So what do you do? You say Sean, you know? So those kind of things, I was just interpreting um, some um, music terms 
and I was trying to, I was speaking to uh, Times, Justin and Mark and trying to get some notes from them, especially Times because he's Brazilian. So I was like, well, what do you think I should translate? What do you think, you know, I should use terms and et cetera, especially because I'm not a musician, so I won't know a lot. And he's like, well, some terms you just say it in English. You know, there's no translation. And you know, musicians, they will understand. So that's another thing. And I'll get to that point. What do you have to do? Also, um, I have, how many minutes do we have left? We still have some time, right? So um, I have another video from a really good friend of mine that we met in, in Argentina. And I want to share for you, for Spanish speakers, um, I like to give him the opportunity to share with you um, a little bit of his experience. So I'm going to find his video here. His name is Jonathan, as you can see here. Hey guys, so five quick tips that you can use uh, or know when starting to translate or to interpret it. So the first one, don't be more than your main speaker. Don't expose yourself more than him or her. So know your place and know that he or she needs to go uh, forward just to be more seen. Second of all, try to use the same amount of words or and, and time uh, that he or her took to uh, make the, the, the sentence or the affirmation. Just don't wait. Don't, don't use more time or a lot of less time than that. Try to stick to that. Second one, try to imitate him or her, mimic him in or her in everything they do. You know, with their arms, with their voice, exclamation, with everything. It's just to 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 be like a like a mirror of her, of them. If they run, run. If they just sit, you see it and just uh, let it be. Uh, the fourth tip would be just to know. Be, Beforehand, the words uh, uh, that you don't need to use or that you are not supposed to say because they are offensive or sound bad in the culture or language that you are translating. So try to know what words might might sound that way, um, and you will need to find someone that knows your culture and knows the the native culture or the culture you're going to. So that's kind of hard, but you would save a lot because you can do a pretty bad job if you say something that you are, are not supposed to and the last one for me is that um if you have time just go over the whole message with uh, with the main speaker but if you don't have time just ask him or her some uh illustrations they are going to use or some uh keywords or difficult or weird words that they know they have just let them uh um, to ask for them because you will need to write them down and just look for that if you don't have uh, much time to go over the whole message. But of course, you always need to review it the, the, most, the most that you can. So, hope that this helped you guys. Hey guys, so... Uh, oh, oh no, okay. Awesome. Yes, this is Jonathan. He is a awesome um, interpreter. He helped us a lot. Um, during our Argentina uh, tour this year. So we were so blessed to have him. This is so awesome to have, just, just for you guys to see another face. <laughs> hopefully you could um, hear him and see him, but hopefully you got to take some notes from his tips, how to um, interpret and, and translate well. Awesome, thank you so much for your encouragement. So um, I have some final tips uh, before we end. This is time for, for questions. I know you might have some questions, so type them up. Um, so my final tips are in-ears. So this thing here changed my life forever as an interpreter. Uh, ouvindo a minha voz alto e claro, 
favor, vocês confirmem no chat, por favor. Ela vai dar um, umas dicas finais, tá? Porque uh, não estavam ouvindo ela. Tá? Então, ela está falando que vai dar umas dicas finais. Tá, você, ela estava dizendo que você precisa ter. And it doesn't make sense on a sentence. So, if you can, try use in ears, the, the wireless ones, not these ones, but whatever you can get, you know? So, and like Jonathan said, speak with your host. Talk to the person, talk to the speaker beforehand. Get their notes, bug them, you know? Because sometimes they're late with their stuff. Some people can relate to that. Sorry, girls, I was a little bit late with mine, but hopefully you all got everything that you needed. So for further studies, I recommend you watch videos from people that are highly experienced. Like I told you, I said for Brazilians, for Portuguese, I highly recommend Pastor Felipe Parente, Pastor Fabio Casac. Let me say again, Okazaki, sorry. Pastor Filipe Murdoch also. And for Spanish, our friend, Jonathan Proietti. So guys, we're, we're finishing up, but we're gonna, we're gonna um, um, open up for um, questions before I talk about, about more classes. So, Connor, are you ready with the questions, Q&A session? Yeah. Oh, the, they're written in Portuguese. Some of them. So, I'll, there's one that was put in the chat that I'll read, and then you can answer the first one in the Q&A section. So, what would be a reputable theological online course to subscribe to that would allow you to interpret in the context of today's reality? Wow. Well, I didn't prepare for that kind of question. Well, you know what, Sharon? Um, can I answer you with a little bit of research? I don't have the answer right now to give you, especially because that's, um, like you said, reputable theological. It's, th it's, it's such a delicate thing in our days today, especially from where, I am right now in a theology class, theology university. Unfortunately, I see so many, I mean, unbiblical, unfortunately I have to say, uh, theology out there. So for now, until you have your answer, I'll tell you to read your Bible, to seek God's guidance, to get, ask God for, um, discernment and let me get your um your contact information and please type it up here i'll uh, make sure some of our um, um some of our helpers will take a note and give it to me um uh, but i don't have one on the top of my head to tell you especially because this is serious stuff So uh, I don't want to get trapped on that one, but it's good that you asked that you were worried about having a theological, a reputable theological, biblical um, online course. That's, that's a good indication. And I know God is going to honor you for that. Okay. So I see on the Q and a, um, I see on the Q&A uh, question in Portuguese. So I'm going to read in Portuguese and then I'm going to translate myself, okay? So Jennifer Toledo, she said, Teremos acesso à gravação do conteúdo? Gostaria de assisti assistir novamente. So she's asking if we're going to have access um, to the classes and she would like to see it again. Yes, Jennifer, you got it. Girl, we got your back. Sim, Jennifer, nós vamos te enviar o link para o conteúdo, você vai poder assistir de novo. So, all of the classes are going to be recorded and we're going to announce when and how you guys are going to get it. Right, Connor? I'll step in. This is Mark. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In... only if you register for the class. Once you okay. register for the class, then then you can get it after the fact. We will do our best to email it to you. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's our hope, assuming that everything goes right with it. But obviously you can't ask and have the questions answered if you don't join us. But uh, yeah, we're, we're very excited about that possibility, but it won't be made available publicly. So you have to register for each class that you want to get a recording of after. Um, I love what you were saying about, about matching the speaker. Uh, and I do this all the time. I tell you, if I put my foot up on a monitor, you put your foot up on a mm -hmm. monitor. <laughs> I say, if I walk forward, you walk forward. If I sit in a chair, you sit Lower. in a chair. <laughs> so match the, and not just, not just them, but the animation. If they're hype, you're mm -hmm. hype. If they're soft, you're soft. Another thing that I would like to add to that is allow time for the audience to respond that knows English. So don't just, the second I finish speaking or somebody finishes speaking, you start translating. If half the audience understands the pastor and applauds, you wait until the applause is over or repeat yourself if you know. And if you don't have any of your monitors, find a monitor and try to make sure it's positioned towards you and that the speaker is in it in a way where they will not get get uh, feedback, but that you can hear them and try and get to where you can see their lips. And so that's a crucial thing too. Anything else that comes to mind on your end? No, oh, that was really good add-ons, definitely. Ultimately, to, you're an extension remind. of the person. Yeah. So the two... In, in a non-biblical way, it become one voice, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> and and ultimately, I think another thing, you, you had this question, how do you deal with nerves? Um, overall, I think that God will give you the words. And, and mm -hmm. part of that in my book is just kind of, Loosen your tongue, loosen your mind, trust in the Lord and in your training, and just trust that if if God is speaking through this person, they will speak through you. That doesn't mean you don't come ill-prepared. <laughs> but another thing, huge thing, how, the, these are the questions that I ask somebody when I'm going to have them translate for me. How'd you learn? It sometimes some of the worst translators I've known have gone to school for it. Wouldn't you admit <laughs> when we, when we talk to people, Oh yeah, I studied, I did this, I did that. They're not, they're not always the best. You some of the best translate. Why? why? Cause the schools are bad. <laughs> no. Cause they, they didn't do it. I mean, you learn by doing it. Oh, application. application. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, what do we say? I heard, I forgot. Mm -hmm. I saw, I remembered, I did, I understood. I guarantee you the people that are understanding the most right now are the two people translating. <laughs> they understand. <laughs> <laughs> they understand and if you're going to be translating, you will understand. It won't be perfect. God will give you grace. God will give you the words to say. Mm -hmm. He will give you those words. But one thing that I would say is if you really want to do this, you have to practice. And yeah. the best way to practice is from here on out, what you watch, you watch with English audio and mm -hmm. your country's subtitles. You want to graduate? Watch it without your country's subtitles and only English audio. Some of the best translators I know learned solely from watching American movies and American this and American that. And they learned by, by figuring it out, solving it. Times never studied English. Times never went to school. And he went from one year of speaking no English whatsoever. We could not talk to him at all about it to the next year. He's he's doing great because he was submersed into it. You have to submerse yourself yeah, into so it. Yeah, so true. Yeah. 
And I definitely um, think that the best way it is reading your Bible, like I told you That's guys. fantastic. Reading your Bible in English. And guys, now we have our phones. What about audio? Audio, audio. Yeah, Bible What app. about, so, yeah. So, yeah, audio. You I version. do this every, every yeah. morning. I do this every morning. I, Guys, I don't read or listen to my Bob in Portuguese anymore. I just can't. High because five. I'm... <laughs> I'm doing a favor for myself. Yeah. I, now, as I, I need this for my Michelle, life. This is my life. Before we get to these other questions, I have a quick question for you. A few months ago, you decided that you were going to learn Spanish. Yeah. What the heck? How did you do it? And 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 what what did you start doing in order to do that? Well, worship songs in Spanish. Two. Duolingo. Duolingo. I know I I have a great a great um um an example is Nikita. Guys, she's Dutch. Yeah. And she can speak Spanish. That was amazing. I was amazed. Yeah. And she learned from Duolingo. I yeah. we don't get credits for that. But <laughs> you know, and reading the Bible in Spanish or listening. Guys, this is a powerful tool. Yeah. Your, your version is the Bible app, you version, it says you version. And yeah. you can change to every single language. You know what? I love languages and I'm learning yeah. Mandarin. I'm learning Japanese. <laughs> I'm learning French. I am learning Russian. I have a hard time with English. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I love languages. I don't know if I'm going to get fluent in any of those, but at least I, I grasp, I have a, I get a grasp of it. You know, I never know what the Lord is going to send me, but I know one thing for sure. I know how to say Jesus loves you in Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Do you want to wow. hear it? Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. It's Yesu Aini. You got to have an intonation. It's kind of hard. So every time I go to Sao Paulo to the stores where the Chinese, you know, mm. so they're all, they're, they're all Chinese. So I go there and I'm like, are you from China? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, yes, I need. And they're like, they're looking at me. <laughs> what are you trying to say? That's it epic. doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just, I'm just delivering the message, you epic. know? So this epic. is why we do what we do, right? Okay, we've got a bunch of questions here. Connor, which ones have we asked so far? Or is Kavehena here? Where what I can I can ask as well. Um so did no, you already get the, the the top that you see there, Michelle, if you click the Q and A. Uh, mm -hmm. how do you deal with your nerves? Can they get in your way? I'm a yeah. bone interpreter, but I have never done it in front of more people. Yeah, definitely they can get in your way. But like Mark mentioned, um, we know uh, that God is with us. He's within us. Greater is he who's in us than who's not. So um, I, I, I was nervous before I started here. <laughs> you know, I, I had that um, butterflies feeling, right? Yep. So how did you girls interpret that? You and tell me later, okay? Yeah. And yeah, then that's, that's a great thing is talking about those little analogies. Earlier, I said, painted into a corner at, or pigeonholed. Those are two very American phrases. Yeah, <laughs> work and on that one. <laughs> another thing that I, that I want to encourage you that just comes to mind right now is having worked with translators all over the world, the best and the worst. I remember one time I was talking about, we just saw this many people give their lives to Christ. And the guy's like, they just sold this many t-shirts back at the merch table. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then somebody came up to me saying mark i was in the audience uh, you need to fire that translator and we had to and it was a shame because he was a really nice guy but we had no idea he was translating wrong another time we were on stage and this and and i i practiced with the girl i said do this and when i do this and then we get up on stage and she's hiding in the back corner whispering i just had to get her off the stage I just had to get I just had to do the whole rest of the show without translation because she was actually making it worse. So you have to be wise. I think one of the things you need is 
a, a language accountability partner. <laughs> you ready for this? I've chosen to be this with with Michelle. So whenever she says something wrong or not quite correct, I have to be the one in a in a in a private area to say uh, um it means this and she's like oh gosh i gotta work on that or or cr you need to say this um you said earlier give the credits it's no it's give the credit to that person we never give that person credit you say you would see you say give the credits like there are many credits we say one so just little things yeah. like that but that somebody who didn't grow up learning this language even people growing up learning this language you know uh, our, my wife still says things different she's from trinidad my daughter still says things different she's from my wife's womb <laughs> so so nerves another thing to remember go pee before you go on stage and when you do about two seconds before you go on stage you'll have to go pee again <laughs> it's just how it is i still well, get that yeah yeah i just want to add to that you you pray you know i Amen. pray i say god i am nervous just be honest you know you have an accountability partner you know when i'm nervous yeah. i come i say i don't i don't remember saying this to pastor mark but maybe i've said to somebody else I said, you know what? I'm nervous. There's something going on that it's not about this. Sometimes it's not about what you're going to do, yeah. but things in your life, you know, yeah. you, you got to have an accountability partner, just not because of your life, but also to pray with you. Yeah. You got to have friends That's huge. That, that can, that can pray with you, can hear you not to, um, not to criticize you, but to say, Hey, encourage you. You can do this. You got this. And Mark is this yeah. person. He's always encouraging us in everything that we do. And yeah, this is I, fantastic. I'm always trying to get people to ascend. I, I People t typically think that they've plateaued and they get comfortable there. And if you don't grow, well, if you have a plant that doesn't grow, it's dead. Your skin cells are coming off of your arm every day. Your skin is replenishing itself. Your hair is coming out. If something isn't growing, it's dead. You got to grow. Um, okay, next next quick question. We're going to do a bunch of these quick. Any useful books to increase your interpretation skill level? Anything come to Bible. mind on the, the Bible? Love it. Bible. That's the best Bible. book of all. That's the yes. best book of all. Yes. Okay, this one I can't answer. Yeah, uh, so sempre I'm, TV. I'm gonna... <laughs> Mark needs to learn Portuguese. Who's going to teach him? Sim, sim. Okay, um, let me, let me, um, I'll read it in, in Portuguese and I'll translate. Um, I've always had um, um, a year to learn English. I think it's pretty cool. And the work of interpreters and translators. Do you, um, um, can you tell us about a place to study? Well, there are many, many um, courses and classes that you can even take online. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have one here to suggest to you um, particularly, but I don't even know that I said this word right, did I? Particularly, yeah. <laughs> Specifically, yeah, that's a, particularly. That's a yeah. hard one. Um, yeah. But like, like I said, um, I can look it up, some good, good English courses. Um, especially online, guys. Yeah, in our days, there's so much. Let's not travel to places. Let's no. save gas. Okay. If you do want to learn through submersion, that's great. The, through mm -hmm. through actually being living in that place, that's probably yeah. the best. But mm -hmm. you don't need that. Some of the best translators I've worked with never left their country before, or 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 just stayed in that area. And some of the and I know people who have lived here for 15 years and still don't know English. So it doesn't yeah, mean that you're going to, doesn't, doesn't mean it's, it's how much you apply. This is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. This is apply going to be hard. Time and effort. Yeah. So, so one thing I want to tell you, okay. If you know the Bible, I tell, I tell people all the time because they always ask me, people ask me to teach them English. I am not an English teacher. I might become one eventually i'm not sure if i'm called but if if that's god's will i don't know anyway so i tell people if you know your bible and you start listening to the bible app in english 
eventually you you're going to you're going to learn yeah because you already you you already have a knowledge and you're going to translate it uh, um automatically in your mind yeah and in no time you're going to learn english i tell this to people all the time i yeah. i improve this is how i improve my english obviously you need grammar and all that stuff and if you apply your time to english course or even youtube videos but you know yeah. what you can uh give me your um you can email us at booking at christsafari.com and i'll try to get some more info for you next yeah. if the preacher laughs at you to laugh i think that what they're asking is it's, mm -hmm. it's is it okay if the preacher laughs that you would laugh too i would say oh, yeah. have fun have a blast some of the best Ooh. sermons i've ever given are when me and that that translator are clicking and we're just like oh we're having fun and and so i would definitely not try to be serious if they're serious be serious mm -hmm. but if they're having fun heck yeah if they tease you which may happen go with it play with it don't be don't take it personally what would you say yeah definitely yes have fun but not only that i think what he actually mentioned is like if the preacher the speaker laughs you laugh you imitate it's about yeah. you being a actor if you want to be a good interpreter yeah. You have to imitate the speaker. You have to take that role. You look at the person and see how this person walks and talks and yeah. expressions, face expressions, yeah. and everything the person, even the hand. Every time Marx changes his, his microphone hand, I change my microphone hand. <laughs> I do You're this. You're the best. You're the best. You know, I do this. Yeah. When you watch it online, it looks much better. It looks psych. Yeah. Synchronized, 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 synchronized. Yeah. yeah. Synchronized. I'm still working on my pronunciation. You're, guys. you're, yeah. You're an extension of of the speaker, and God didn't give you the spirit of fear or timidity. Um, you got this. The only way to learn is through trying, trying. I would encourage you to talk to your church and say, hey, can I start helping with sermon translation? And even if there's only one person listening, chances are if they don't speak any of the language that's being preached by your pastor, even if you get it, it right half the time, that person is better than hearing none of the sermon and get started and learn and then ask those questions. Of course, what you said earlier, asking the person, are there any analogies, any stories? Are there, what's the Bible verse? I always need to make sure I tell the guy the Bible verse. I tell them the version I'm reading from NIV. It's going to be this Bible verse, maybe this one, maybe this one. Do you know it? Do not ever, 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 ever misquote a Bible verse. You can misquote the pastor if, if you have to. Don't choose to, but don't misquote the Bible. I do have a funny sermon analogy here. I, I know we're supposed to start with a joke, but we're going to end with a joke. A friend of mine was talking about, about uh, he was giving his very first sermon as an English speaker in Brazil. And he was talking about how God put his sins behind him. And he used a word, and the word translated as fart. <laughs> I don't know what the word is, but the word, it, it, the way he, the accent, the way that he said it was fart. Do you know the word, Michelle? Ooh, yes. Boom. Uh, well, whatever it was, it, there was Ooh, another way to say it. Weird. There was weird. another way to say it that, that like, and, or, and, and, or, and, or there's another one. I just remembered that. Now it's peido. That's it. And what it, and is, and is, okay. is there a different way to pronounce that? No, peido. Okay. Well, well, however he said, he, he got the word wrong and somebody said, Somebody said, uh, excuse me, you said the wrong word. And then somebody else said, no, 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 <laughs> he actually does fart our sins out. It was, it was just hilarious, but he had to roll with it. He couldn't be, he couldn't take himself too seriously. Don't be a perfectionist yeah. in this. Just try and, and try and follow the spirit. God cares about translation so much yeah. that when there mm -hmm. weren't interpreters, 
he gave the gift of tongues on the day of Pentecost, which we just celebrated yesterday. He gave the gift of tongues to people so that there was an, a translator for every single language. That's how much he cares. That's how important your job is. And so know and thrive in it. Okay, uh, what tips can you give for simultaneous translation? For example, I heard that if there is no way for a joke to be translated and make sense, you can just say, he told a joke, just laugh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I would try and tell the joke because you don't know if it doesn't make sense until the joke is over. Yeah, it's, it's a really tough place to be, Mark. <laughs> I was just there. I would say you know, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, I was just going to say this to add to yes, what you, go ahead. you said. Go ahead. You sometimes you have sometimes no. All the time you have to be honest. I think the best way is to talk with the speaker beforehand, ask if there's any analogies. You try your best. You know, I think that a lot of people um, they get nervous when they're they're going to um, interpret or translate something yeah. because they're afraid of not getting it. Yeah. of not understanding of, you know, of one or two words, they don't know what it means. Yeah. And a lot of times I had, it's not the ideal. I'm not saying, Oh, this is what it's I'm going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I had to turn to the speaker and say, I didn't understand. Can you try again? Yes. You yes. know, and maybe you're going to have to try you. I'm sorry. Just being honest. You don't have to yeah. be nervous because you made a mistake yeah. but it's better that the audience gets exactly what it's what the speaker is trying to say than you than you um being shy yeah and not asking you know just we we get we get not shy but we get um how do you say we get timid, timid. yeah yeah mm -hmm. i know i know the feeling i've been there yeah, i know the feeling. yeah it's it's over and there is always warfare going on remember the warfare never stops you know warfare yeah. is it's within the with the speaker and yeah. with within the uh, interpreter so yeah. so prepare yourself it's not easy but it's possible people are doing it <laughs> yeah all over the so, world they're doing so it bad I, and they're doing it good do it yeah. good for jesus <laughs> yeah because you have the holy spirit of god Exactly. So, exactly. So I know you guys are, are getting there because people are typing here. They're asking questions because you guys are translating, interpreting simultaneously. And um, I can't th thank you enough. Amen. Um, I, I would also encourage you, somebody asked what Bible translation I use. I use NIV pri primarily, but sometimes I, I use different ones. It just depends. Um, I would also like to encourage you to tr to practice a little bit with the trans with the pastor before just say could could we just work on timing uh because you want to make sure that the pastor doesn't go long sentences because you could forget mm -hmm. yeah so that's with I consecutive, translation. consecutive consecutive so here's a great example i'm going to say something i'm, I'm just going to talk about something and michelle's going to translate so today we had our first master class. Então hoje nós tivemos a nossa primeira master class. And it went really well. E foi muito bom. The only problem with it. O único problema que tivemos. Was that I went too long. <laughs> and eu... I didn't give Michelle the chance to translate. <laughs> eu eu falava muito rápido e não dei a chance para Michelle traduzir. One of the cool things you can stop translating now. One of the cool things about what I just did and why I love going to Spanish speaking, Portuguese speaking countries is I have twice the amount of time to figure out what I'm going to say next. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> okay, there's another last question here from it's Nelly. In Spanish. Go it's for it. In Spanish. Okay, let's practice my Spanish. Como puedes aprender? Los aspectos culturales o referencias culturales para poder traducirlas correctamente. 
Um, yo pienso que, no voy, no voy a hablar en español porque tenemos personas que hablan. I'm not going to speak in Spanish because we have people translating right now. Um, so she's saying, how can I learn cultural aspects, references, cultural context yeah. to, to correctly translate? So that's her question. I think that's where watching those movies, watching those TV shows, of course, be careful with what you put in. Uh, there, there's some really bad stuff out there. But that being said, that's where you're going to hear, oh, you really painted me into a corner on this one. Or, you know, I got pigeonholed. Or that's where you're going to hear those phrases. You pulled out the rug from under my feet. There's, there's so many different times that you will hear those things. And the popular ones in shows be careful though because the translation down below may not necessarily be the same but i get a kick out of hearing those phrases in other countries because they're all different yeah so um i what i do i watch um preachers i watch nice. um sermons nice um with with interpreters yeah i just gave you um a little references of the ones in Portuguese and one yeah. in Spanish. He's um, the best. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can give you more in Spanish. Just uh, send us an email yeah. so we can send you more um, videos and YouTube channels to yeah. um, to speakers with interpreters and people that we trust and yeah. that you can learn from it. I think that that's, for me, that's the best way. Yeah. My, my I, I, own church that I go to, every single Sunday, we have interpretation. Every mm, single Sunday. Yeah. I'm, I'm always on the schedule, but when I'm not, I am learning. I'm listening and I'm learning. Go ahead, Mark. Amen. Say something. Yeah, and I, I think that if you search common uh, American uh, phrases or sayings or idioms, I think it, it, idiom, mm -hmm. idiom mm -hmm. is the word. Yeah, uh, I D i-o-m i think it is yeah idioms. Uh -huh. english idioms if you mm -hmm. search those and and search them in your language um you know you know idiom american idioms english idioms translated in portuguese or english idioms translated in spanish, spanish. i think that that's where you're going to get mm -hmm. and i i like i said i'm fascinated with how those idioms sound or, or what what your idioms are every once in a while you'll say something to me i'm like oh my gosh like like you don't want to be on stage and when somebody said yeah that person was was kissing butts you don't want to translate that literally <laughs> because no. kissing butts literally <laughs> does not mean what it means here in america <laughs> it means they were wow. um they were you know they were trying to be too nice or something <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, English idioms is, is something. Okay, um, we're about, we're, we got to close, we got to end. I want to thank all 30 some odd of you that have have joined us. I want to thank especially Michelle. Give a round of applause for Michelle. Yeah. Michelle, you you're have welcome. two other classes at least that I know that you're a well, part of. Yeah, so Tell yeah, us about I want to share that with you guys. So uh, this is uh, some more other classes that I want to refer to you, um, Evangelism 101, me You're Connor. the girl for that. So we want to teach you how to do this. You Tell can me, do it. Michelle, you do it. you've preached the gospel with me on stage before, tens, sometimes hundreds of thousands. You also preach it personally. How many Uber drivers have you won for Christ? I lost count. Guess. Not be, not, I mean, I know not to be proud, than, pride, not prideful, to be or proud, no. but how many roughly over 12, right? Over a dozen, no, over 50. Oh Every single gosh. one, come on. How many times have you? Have I'm you so proud of her. Every I time know. I take an Uber, <laughs> she bleeds into Christ. And, For and, sure. I mean, when you, when you see Paris Hilton in the bathroom in uh, American Airlines terminal, what do you do? I share the gospel with her and she <laughs> loves me. I have a really, really interesting stories. Very interesting stories. Uh, so I can't wait you. for you to share because I see you do this all the time. I am really gifted in platform preaching. It's not because of me. It's just what God gave. 
it, I, I, I do not take the credit for that. She is so gifted, not just in translation and tour managing. By, by the way, she has a great class on tour managing that I need you to watch if you're going to do any sort of touring. Be a part of that. Sign up for that. But she has the gift on one-on-one -on -one evangelism. So does Connor. And Connor's here somewhere. He's going to show his face in five, four, three, two, maybe not. There he is. And hey, hey Connor. <laughs> so these guys are very, very gifted in that one-on-one. -on -one. I remember when Connor first joined the band, one of his criteria was, will I get a chance to preach the gospel off stage? Like, can I go and walk down the street and share the gospel? I'm like, dude, you are so made for this band. And I remember seeing Michelle, she'll check the whole band in as a good tour manager, and then win the hotel manager for Christ. Connor, anything else you want to share about that class? Um, just, yeah, we're excited. We're excited to equip. We're excited to allow you guys to, you know, everyone has a different style. You're all gifted differently. So it's not impressing upon our way into you, but showing you examples of how you can apply our stories, our experience to your individual skill sets, passions, gifts that God has equipped you in. So. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Connor. Yeah, so look forward for that. God is great. Well, there are two more classes that I want to yes. invite you. It's how to yes, become a full-time missionary. That's something yes. you can't miss. Because you yes. probably, a lot of you guys might be thinking how all of this was done. How did it mm -hmm. happen to each one of you? It was yes. different, but it was the same in certain areas mm -hmm. so that's pretty awesome and how to raise support how yes. do we do this we don't get a salary we all we all live by faith and the lord blesses us and it blesses through you so and I have one of one of the ways that we do that michelle is we ask people to partner with us and today if you don't mind michelle i'd like to advocate on your behalf uh, I've lived with this girl. I got goosebumps. Look at that. Chicken skin. What do you do? <laughs> My wife calls them raised pores. That's a great example of how, of how yeah. different, different ways, different ways you can say things in different languages. Um, I have goosebumps just thinking about, about Michelle and her calling and her passion and how feverishly she has served the Lord over all these years on pennies per month. Sometimes not knowing where the food's gonna come from, not knowing where she's going to stay. Um, I, 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 I just wanna advocate on her behalf that if you've been blessed by this class, if you've been blessed by her, if she's an inspiration to you, Will you put some fuel in her tank? Will you help fund her? She is one of the hardest workers in our entire team. Big portion of that has to do with the fact that she is from Brazil and the people that she knows in, in, in Brazil cannot afford to fund her. But if God's put it on your heart to support her as, as we have, um, we want to encourage you to go to Christafari.com forward slash donate. That's Christafari.com forward slash donate and click there and you can then see her name in the pull down menu. Now, if you're in Brazil or in a country where that donate page does not work, tell how, how they can donate directly to you through PayPal or something like that, Michelle, please. Yeah, so guys, if you want to make a donation, you can email me. This is my personal email. But also, guys, um, you can send it to an email to booking at christafari.com. I get that email too. And you can send, you can make a direct deposit. Um, and there are many other ways. I can just go through those ways directly with you. 
Yeah, I just I know that you look at what we're doing and you guys are saying, well, these guys are already have already arrived or these guys are already here, so they don't need our help. We literally are living day to day and by faith, and nobody's doing that more in this band than Michelle. So I, I strongly ask you to pray and ask the Lord. Are you calling me to support Michelle as a full-time missionary? You've seen the fruit. When you hear the personal evangelism class, you'll be like astounded that this person is living day by day. But God says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And I believe he's going to use you, those who are blessed by Michelle, by her testimony, by her story, to help provide all those things. So thanks so much for partnering with Michelle. Thanks so much for watching this math. Master class. Anything else you want to say, Michelle? Yes. Um, I was going to ask Connor if there is a way that I can see people's faces because I wanted to take pictures with them. Ooh, that would be incredible. <laughs> yeah, give me one second. Let me. I want to see you guys. Don't go anywhere. And in the meantime, please follow me on social media. While... I'm typing here um, yes. my, my Instagram. Please. While you do that, Michelle, I'm going to tell them about the next classes. And yeah, here we go for course. this week's curriculum tomorrow, Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. It is reggae drums with Marcus Ritchie. 5 p.m., which was, this was a 5 p.m. meeting tomorrow. Reggae keys with Justin Nalimu. The next day, Wednesday is live percussion and cinematography. Uh, myself, Luis Juarez, and Benjamin Tang are going to be teaching you all our tips in cinematography. The next day, Thursday, African dance, Afrofusion dance with Nikita Carter. I know that Michelle's going to be dancing. Um, and then management with Tori Ho'opi. And then we're closing out this week with reggae bass, Avion Times and Nikita, and band leading by myself. And beyond that, guys, uh, each week we have a new set of curriculum. Make sure you go and join our email list and make sure that you sign up for each individual class. Anything else? Where's that, where it. are those pictures? That's it. I, I want to hey. see you guys. Come Let's on. see these faces. Let's I see these see your faces. faces. Show Hazel, your faces, where are guys. You? Show your faces. Yes, Anik, I see. Is that Anik? Espanol, yes. Show your face, you guys. I want to take a picture with you. Come on. Mm -hmm. I see Pedro. Pedro yeah, just, Kelly. Yeah, I need to yes. add people, so just give me a second. Vanessa, I see Vanessa. My. Oh. Anik. Wow. Estou aparecendo no meu vídeo agora. Se eu quiser ativar o áudio, eu falo diretamente com eles. Ok. Connor, you need to mute everybody, but I want to see people's faces. Rosa, I see Rosa. I got the muting. Yes. Where is your face? Marcio, I see you too. I see, I see my sister Petra. No, 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 it's not right. I love you guys all. I see Renato. I see somebody's wearing somebody's wearing a Christafari shirt. Hey Rosa. Rosa, tá vestindo a camisa do Christafari. Oh man, we got to do this for every class. This is the best. A gente tem que fazer isso para. Olha eu aqui traduzindo, gente. Uh, Here I am interpreting. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> She's got the hat and everything. It's just part of me. I can't hear Mark speaking without translating him. Richard Waka. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, let me see your beautiful faces. Are you ready, Petra? Where is your face? I want to see your face. I think we're still, I'm, he's still, still trying to he's get still doing it. Hey, uh, um, okay. is anybody watching from somewhere that's not South America? If so, put your hand up. Okay, Marcio, um, let me try and unmute you. I, um, yeah, Marcio, yeah. where are you watching from? Uh, Houghton, New York. New York, what's your first language? Uh, Portuguese. Portuguese, nice. Okay. Uh, anybody else watching that's not not in or from South America? Yeah, Raise me, your hand. Gerson, Gerson Rivera from Bronx, New York. Bronx, New wow. York. 
Jerson. <laughs> nice. Hey. Okay, uh, who else? Nelly, where are you from? I'm from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. <laughs> Bayamon. I love that place. Okay, raise your hand if you are, if you are not not from South America. Anybody else? Okay, Pedro, talk to me. Let's see if we can unmute Pedro. And hi, hi. Hey, hey, hey. Where are you from? I'm from the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Hey, we really want to go. I have to tell you, Pedro and Marcio, they are one in our team of interpreters. So they're going to be interpreting. <laughs> Yeah. And hopefully they're going to help us get to the Dominican Republic soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to go to all these places. Okay. Anybody else here not not from South America? Raise your hand. Okay, Montserrat, where, where are you from? Guatemala. Guatemala, Central America. America de Central. How do you say American, Central America in, in Espanol? America Central. Central. Anybody else? Anybody else not from Latin America? Uh, Walter, where are you from? Uh, I'm watching from Guatemala. Central Guatemala. America as well. Nice. Awesome. Man, we, we are loved in Central and South America, aren't we? Yeah. Is this, or are we still on, are we still, show, he's still working on showing some faces here? Everyone, this, this is everyone that we can get. This is everyone we can get? Okay, awesome. Okay, we're going to take a screenshot. I'm going to take a screenshot. So everybody look at your camera and smile. <laughs> All right, I just took mine. Oh, this is so incredible. I'm so grateful for every one of you guys. Oh, and, awesome. Um, I see, I see Brian, Mark, see Brian, Brian's here. He was your translator in Argentina. Um, wait, I'm looking, I'm looking at Brian. Hi, Mark. How you doing, man? Oh, I know that, that accent. I'm not seeing him, though. I think I need to. See Brian Krieger. Yeah, yeah, you were at uh, the beard. here in Cipolletti and then Ken. And I did play it for you. I remember, I remember very, very well. Dude, so good to see. I'm not seeing you in the screen Bye. for some weird reason. There you are. There you are. Don't worry. Oh, G Brian. I'm sorry. Good Brian. <laughs> hey, man. Great to see you again, brother. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you too, man. So grateful for all you guys. And you can tell where he learned his, his English. <laughs> when he says, mate, that's a bit different, isn't it? <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. We hope that you will join through translation or helping with translation in the future classes. We'll see you guys in a sense. Continue to grow. And let's get ready to go into the world. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. See you Amen. Ciao, ciao. Muito obrigado. Beleza. Muito obrigado. Beleza. Nos vemos. Thank you. Adios. 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 Thank you very much. Adios. Adios. What a good day. What a good day. <laughs>